This week on The Week Ahead, will EPF declare their dividends next week? And a quick look into some of the corporate earnings of Pat Gas, Kosan, Rubber and Maybank. Welcome to the show. My name is Ibrahim Sani. I'm joined by my colleague uh, Hafiz Marzuki. Both of us are transmitting this uh, show from our homes. We are continuing with the work from home program. Uh, before we talk about next week, we have to contextualize about what happened this week because it's rather massive. Let's start with uh, the uh, announcement by the finance minister that ICNA uh, EPF withdrawal can now be done without conditions. Hafiz, what do you think of this? I think uh, this is a very, uh, for me, is a very big news coming after a change in leadership at EPF. And I think, uh, I think somehow in, in deep down in my heart, I feel somehow it, this is leaked because you see uh, the, the previous uh, EPF CEO seems hesitant in terms of uh, disbursing uh, as much amount as possible under the ICNA initiative. But, but, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to speculate. Uh, it's it's big news. A lot of people are receiving it uh, well, uh, but I do I do not know to what extent uh, the impact is on uh, the people's retirement fund. But of course, uh, when when we discuss about this, Ibrahim, uh, there are a lot of issues they are talking about. Of course, for those uh, who are still with jobs, uh, uh, who are still contributing to their EPF funds, it doesn't make sense to take a dip in uh, your your EPF fund for now. But for those who are lost, who have lost jobs, uh, who's, who's really struggling to make ends meet, uh, this is a welcome news. But of course, you've also, I'm sure, uh, you've also come across a report saying that uh, there are a certain portion of uh, those in the T20 who's also uh, withdrawing, um, uh, withdrawing their their money from this uh, from their respective EPF funds under the ICNA initiative to invest and this is clearly shows that uh, that people are already thinking about how do they diversify their wealth uh, especially now uh, when we are facing a pandemic you know one thing that was interesting about the report uh, it was first published uh, by Banama and was picked up by Sina Harian um, uh, about 32 percent of T20 withdraws money from ICNA because they want to invest in gold and they want to invest yes. in stocks um, the M40s and the B40s withdraw money and a sizable amount, I think one third roughly, also does the same. So this is the story of why investments should be continually done, but I would question why continue to invest in other types of investments using the money that was already allotted for EPF. You know, we, we, we have to look at this from the two um, segments, right? The T20, M40 and the B40. The B40 yes. withdraws money from ICNA largely because they kind of need the cash. It's the cash that if they don't have, then they don't eat. As simple as that. And however dire the consequence of them withdrawing from EPF, you know, they know the risk involved. They are aware of what it means for them. And to some extent, many of them appreciate the time value of money and the compounding interest element within withdrawing EPF. So say, for instance, when you go to EPF and you sign up for the ICNA and you withdraw, let's say, 10,000 ringgit, and uh, based on some of the criteria that was given by the uh, finance minister, uh, it's going to be given in tranches. Six months, if your account one, 100,000 is below, sorry, if your account one balance is below 100,000, you can withdraw up to 10,000 over six months and the first month is uh, 5,000 ringgit. If your account one is more than 100,000 ringgit, you can withdraw at a maximum of 60,000 with your first month uh, 10,000. You know, what that means is you're going to withdraw not the, not the absolute amount of say 10,000 ringgit or 60,000 ringgit that you're withdrawing. What you're withdrawing is that 60,000 ringgit times uh, 5% on average dividend per year, compounding interest over 10, 20, 30 years, however long that you take to retire. That is not, yes. Hafiz, going to be 60,000 ringgit at the end of the day. That's going to be much, much yeah. more than that. Or, you know, if you withdraw 10,000, it's going to be much, much more than that. But because people are desperate, because they want the cash right now, literal cash, cold hard cash into their own hands, they're willing to forego 10,000 times compounding interest, 60,000 times compounding interest, so just that they could feed themselves today. And that is a very sad and sorry state that we are on in this country right now. 
Yes, uh, that, I, I want to pick up on that, Ibrahim, because uh, I think whatever you uh, you raise uh, just now is very pertinent. But I think another thing about about uh, removing, I would say, any uh, sort of uh, of sharat or, or criteria uh, for this ICNA is is basically how I'm reading it, or a, a lot of Malaysians are reading it. Is like everyone can take out from their EPF savings. And, and, and this is quite uh, disturbing to me because, of course, I, I have no intention of doing that, but I'm sure a, a lot of people are considering uh, dipping into their EPF savings. In fact, I've spoken with a couple of my friends, uh, this is just discussing it in general, uh, because this is a, a, a very big issue. And some of them are, are thinking about just taking out the cash to live in the bank. What, what do you make of that, uh, Ibrahim? Because I, I, I don't think it makes sense. It doesn't make sense at all. Uh, but the government is responding to some of the uh, cries by the population, and they're responding to this. And you know, quite honestly, it doesn't matter what you or your, what you or me think about this, uh, Hafiz. What matters most is whether or not what the B40 needs, and they need cash right now, which ties in with what you said just now earlier. I know you don't want to speculate about why uh, Tunku Ali Zakri, the outgoing CEO of EPF, is leaving. But what I can tell you is this. Circumstantial evidence shows that uh, ICNA is not popular uh, amongst the EPF fraternity or among the uh, investment community, uh, number one. And number two, it's not common for EPF CEOs or any CEOs of any pension fund to leave after two years. It's not common. The average age of a CEO in an investment bank, uh, based on a Harvard Business Review study a few years ago that I read, the average age is five years. An EPF CEO should be staying around five years. Within the EPF history also, we see before this uh, Sharil Riza Rizwan, before that Tajri Azlan, you know, they stay for quite some time, you know, not two years, lah, all right? Every, five yes, years, yes. ten years and all that. That is the, the tenure that we're looking at. But because Nukali Zakri took power two years ago, when Pakatan Harapan came into power, they uh, moved uh, Sharil to Khazana. And then uh, now uh, with uh, Tunku Ali Zakri outgoing, and then they, uh, they got uh, Amir Hamza uh, from TNB to take over the EPF role, it all boils down to what is happening internally in EPF uh, that we don't know of, right? And, 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 and you know, circumstantial shows us that I is it, and that's about the, the situation right now. Um, so we'll talk more about what EPF is going to do next week, probably a dividend that comes after the break. But before we go into the break, one more item that I want to talk about is the unemployment figures. Hafiz, we uh, premeditated the conversation uh, last week yes. saying that the unemployment numbers is going to be really bad and uh, all our worst fears came true. Uh, the uh, Department of Statistics announced that the unemployment rate is at 4.8% for last quarter. And this is quarter on quarter also at 4.8%. Total people unemployed is currently at 770,000 people. One of the highest unemployment uh, persons out there in the market um, as far as we're concerned for the past 10 years. And remember, these are uh, trailing data. These data are not up to date. Uh, one can only assume that the first quarter for this year is not going to be a nice picture to be spoken of either and whether or not this is going to be spelling just uh, a situation from bad to worse. Yes, uh, I mean, just looking at numbers. In fact, uh, Ibrahim, just picking up on what you've said, uh, I saw a report quoting uh, the Malaysian Retail Chain Association, uh, which basically said uh, two uh, two-thirds of, biz of businesses have shuttered uh, during this uh, edition of MCO. And it's a worrying number because when businesses close means uh, jobs are lost and 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 looking at how uh, the report came about of course uh, both we've discussed it last week we've kind of anticipated but looking at the cold hard numbers does strike a bit of fear in me uh, into how are we going to deal with this because at the end of the day we at the same time we also we also looking at uh, graduates uh, graduating uh, from university year after year and they are entering a job market which is uh, sluggish, uh, devoid of jobs, devoid of quality jobs. And, and I think there is a need for the government to really come up with something, some, some policy shift that will be able to address uh, this current predicament where we, we are in right now. 
You know, two things that we need to really look forward to uh, is number one, the vaccine rollout in Malaysia. And number two, what is the plans and what are the steps to help small businesses and medium-sized companies? Uh, there is this cryptic uh, photo that was shared by uh, Minister of uh, Technology, OYB Khairi Jamaluddin. Uh, we'll put it up right now on the screen, as you can see. Uh, T minus yeah, T nine. T minus nine. What is that all about, Afiz? Yeah. Okay. Uh, looking at it, I, I mean, I've I've seen the conversations on Twitter, and everyone's are saying this is pointing to basically uh, roughly when he is expected to announce. Because as you know, he, uh, other than the most team minister of science innovation, uh, sorry, science technology and innovation, he's also the co coordinating minister for for the national vaccination plan, or what or what we are calling right now the immunization czar. So, uh, I mean, I mean, that's that's his main job at at this moment right now. Uh, make, making sure the vaccine deliveries are great, making sure the, the rollout plan is great. Uh, although, yes, he is part of the, uh, I would say, uh, in, a, in he, he jointly chaired uh, the immunization and vaccination uh, committee, committee with the health minister, uh, Dr. Sri Dr. Adam Baba, but the spotlight is on him. And I think, uh, in, in fact, Ibrahim, if, uh, this past week, actually, we've, we've given some uh, level of uh, focus on uh, the uh, uh, vaccination plan. We've, we've spoken to uh, Associate Professor uh, Dr. Gauss Azam, who is the uh, special advisor or scientific advisor uh, to Kairi Jamaluddin. Uh, so uh, there, there are a number of issues, right? Uh, one thing is about is about acquiring the vaccines. And, and, and as we all know, uh, in, in the EU, there's been a big hoo-ha about uh, the control exports, etc., etc., and we've seen uh, Kyrie Jamaluddin came out with a statement saying that he spoke to the uh, ambassador of uh, EU as well as ambassador of Belgium of where the, the, the Pfizer uh, factory is, and they've both given assurances that uh, Malaysia will not see uh, a delay in, in, in the arrival of vaccine, which is scheduled at the end of this month. Uh, so, uh, I, I guess that, that's a good news that we're looking forward because I think uh, it is very important uh, for the vaccines to arrive as soon as possible. We have to start vaccinating because uh, we, want, uh, we want this pandemic to be uh, under control. Of course, uh, the vaccine arrival is only one part of the problem. We're looking at the logistical part, which is basically immunizing, inoculating uh, our, our our Malaysian residents, basically the first phase is uh, the frontliners and then we're looking at uh, the second phase, those uh, with un uh, under the high risk category, basically uh, those 60 and above uh, suffer from diabetes, uh, heart, uh, heart diseases, etc, etc. And then we're looking at the general public. So I think K uh, KJ have outlined uh, this whole uh, national vaccination plan and, and we are expected to achieve the, the magic number of over 80% uh, by May 2022. Uh, what, what, yeah. Okay. What, what do you, what do you think about this? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's pray that everything is rolled out smoothly. Um, but uh, before we go into the break, uh, I want to touch on two big things that happened this week, which will continue next week. Uh, my predictions. Uh, one is of course uh, Clubhouse. Um, if uh, you are at all reading any of the Twitter uh, timeline. Clubhouse is actually exploding in Malaysia and um, some of us are actually quite active on Clubhouse and we've uh, spoken about this and that uh, every now and then um, quite uh, furiously on Clubhouse. So do check that out. That is uh, taking place right now as we speak uh, this week and for next week Clubhouse is going to be a big feature. Uh, you're on Clubhouse too, right Hafiz? Yes, uh, definitely. I'm, I've, I've, I've recently, uh, I got invited by our, our, our dear colleague uh, Sharad who's welcomed me into the club, clubhouse, uh, I would say the clubhouse community. Of course, I don't own an iPhone, but uh, I do own an iPad. I managed to uh, install it and, and check it out for myself. And in fact, Ibrahim, I think uh, that the just discussing about clubhouse would take us some time. Why don't we go to, uh, for a short break and we'll come back right after this. Of course, we'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back. This is The Week Ahead. I have uh, Hafiz on the line with me. My name is Ibrahim. We're talking about The Week Ahead. Uh, one big thing that we need to look at is, of course, uh, the EPF possible dividend announcement. 
normally in past years uh, EPF will announce their dividend either on the third week or the fourth week of uh, February uh, for instance last year they they announced uh, the dividend on the 21st of February if I'm not mistaken on 22nd of February um, so will uh, the EPF take the time to announce uh, the dividend for this year a lot of news reports have said that uh, the EPF uh, will not fail to disappoint and they are basing on the net uh, income investment income pardon me so the net investment income uh, from the first nine months for EPF is at 38 billion ringgit and if uh, the EPF manages to get the same levels of investment income for the final quarter uh, just like the first quarter um, meaning pre-COVID and pre-MCO uh, uh, they should be able to uh, pay out up to over 5% uh, dividend for last year and uh, the announcement will also look at the final hurrah of Tunku Ali Zakri uh, before he steps off the role of uh, EPF CEO uh, and Ami Hamza comes in effective 1st March of this year. Of course, uh, Ibrahim, I, I do have uh, one question that, that is that's playing on my mind. Of course, uh, the numbers that is expected uh, to be announced will be uh, whatever you've mentioned it just now. But but looking forward for, for 2021, especially with the uh, just before the break, we've discussed about the, the shift uh, on, on the ICNA policy where, where there will be uh, no more criteria for, for withdrawing uh, from the ICNA. How, how OK, I'm, I'm just going to go out and, and say it. How bad is it going to affect uh, EPF in the in the long run? In fact, uh, how, how is it going to EPF uh, affect EPF next year at this particular time? I think uh, you know the EPF is chugging along just fine. There is nothing wrong with EPF, uh, so to speak. Other than the uh, top guys having some sort of uh, you know musical chair going on, the EPF people, the EPF investment people, are still trudging along just fine. They are continuing their process of diversifying their assets. Um, the strategic asset allocation continues to invest overseas uh, and uh, 30 or 40 percent of their income comes from overseas and with the uh, exchange rate as it is now for every dollar that they make outside they're going to bring back four ringgit so that's going to be good news for people like you and me so on the investment f platform I don't see them having any problems uh, and uh, the issue is, of course, how will people like you and me, people who are workers, people who are making contributions to EPF, uh, survive when we retire 20 years from now, 10 years from now, or even some of us watching this show, they are retiring very soon, 3, 4, 5 years from now. What is the story for us? Because uh, we've seen reports again and again that uh, the majority of uh, EPF uh, savers tend to deplete their savings 5 years into re their retirement. And that's bad news for everybody because then you would resort to uh, subsidization either from the government or from the taxpayers who are currently working. And uh, the state of welfare of the country is going to uh, be worse uh, off uh, if people start running out of savings post uh, working age or during retirement. That is the bad story here. Also uh, in the news, uh, some of the uh, uh, corporate announcements that, will, that is always looked at in this show, three big companies, three big sectors. Uh, we'll start off with uh, Petrans Dagangan, the biggest company that's going to make the announcement next week. And why it's important is because PetDag is closely associated with Petronas, and Petronas themselves are not listed, but a lot of their companies are. One of them is PetDag. If we want to understand how Petronas as a group is going to perform next year or this year, we have to keep a closer eye into what the earnings are for PetDag and that is something that we need to uh, keep an eye out on right now. Yes, uh, that's definitely... Uh, other than uh, Petronas Dagangan, I'm sure there are a few other companies uh, that is expected uh, to announce and, and this would somehow... Uh, I mean, it's... I mean, we're talking about this week after week, right, Ibrahim? And uh, it's it, yeah. it's going to give us an indicator to how uh, how are all these companies uh, facing yeah. uh, the the pandemic. So, two other companies uh, that is worth of note is uh, M Bank. M Bank is also making their corporate announcement. M Bank, of course, is in the financial sector. And the financial sector is under tremendous pressure because their non-performing loans are increasing impaired loans are increasing. We've talked uh, together, Hafiz, you and I, on this yes. at length uh, a few uh, episodes ago. That's one company yes. that we need to look at. 
Another company, finally, uh, that we need to keep an eye out on is Kosan Rub Rubber. The rubber glove industry boomed tremendously last year yes. to a point where some of the uh, orders had to be uh, backlogged up to 24 months, meaning that if you are planning to order rubber gloves, you have to wait today, you have to wait for 24 months until your order is fulfilled. That's how much demand currently is from Kosan Rubber. So we've got three sectors, rubber glove makers, banking and energy, i.e. Petronas, and those are the three companies that we need to look out for for the week ahead. Yes, definitely. And I guess, uh, Ibrahim, before before we bring uh, our episode to a close, I remember just before the break, we've discussed a bit about Clubhouse. And I want to continue a bit of this that discussion over here, uh, as I think, uh, of course, it's quite uh, it's quite limited right now. Uh, if you, if you see the app. Uh, in terms of uh, where where the most users are, it seems right now to be uh, very Klang Valley centric. Uh, but w what do you think about the potential in this uh, app, it's uh, Ibrahim? It's going to be huge. Uh, at the risk of sounding like we're speaking in an echo chamber, uh, because those uh, on Clubhouse right now only are those with iPhone or at least iOS devices like yourself. And, yes. uh, you know, everything starts somewhere. So we're going to start with an echo chamber, Klang Valley echo chamber, very opposition slanted, if you, uh, if I may add, but at the same time, some uh, government officials, including uh, members of uh, the government that are currently working, currently employed by some of the ministries, actually joined in the conversation and defended governmental positions in a very, I would say, hostile room. So that is something that is worth noting, right? Uh, you get uh, yes, a, a government, uh, yeah, you get a government official coming in defending the government's position and getting uh, criticized at the same time. So that's something that is quite unique and also open. People are civil all the time, at least as of now, and that's good. Hafiz, I know you celebrate Chinese New Year because some of your family members yes. are Chinese. Tell us how yes. you're celebrating this year. Yeah, actually, in fact, uh, it was, it was uh, I mean, we had a simple reunion dinner, my wife and I. Uh, we couldn't go back. Uh, my wife is from Sabah, so usually every year we go back to uh, Sabah to actually uh, celebrate with her family. But this year is all via uh, all via a video call, a WhatsApp video call. Uh, it's very much different. Uh, in fact, but but we try to make do uh, where we can uh, because because clearly we can't. I mean, we have we have to adhere to the SOPs uh, that is in place. And even if the SOPs were not in place, Ibrahim, right now looking at the current number, no, nobody in their right mind would want to go out and spread this. Yeah, that's true. Okay, uh, that's it for this episode of The Week Ahead. Uh, to recap, uh, next week you should be looking out for more news on the vaccine rollout. Uh, something might be announced by uh, YBKJ, uh, the dude that is in charge of uh, vaccine rollout. Um, you can also look out for news on the EPF dividend announcement, possibly, uh, that is going to be made very, very soon, either next week or the week after that. And of course, uh, corporate announcements that is going to be inevitably uh, flagged into how corporates are going to announce their earnings for last year. But more importantly, what it means for some of the sectors that they are operating in. Finally, on the culture side, Clubhouse is going to be big. That's my prediction, at least in Malaysia. Definitely. Yeah, so we'll try and get on that platform if you can, if you get an invite. Otherwise, that's it from me. Anything, Avis? No, that's it from me. Uh, to everyone, have a good... Uh end of February, I guess, and uh, have a good, uh, have a related Happy Chinese New Year. Thank you very much. Until next time.